Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm today's host, Kelsey Lee. This week, we are presenting Thor in the Land of the Giants, adapted by Daniel Hines from Norse Mythology. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. It was late in the great halls of Asgard. The gods were sleeping, or at least most of them were. Thor, god of thunder, strongest warrior to ever walk on earth or in the heavens, was having an argument with Loki, god of fire, and cunning trickster. It had started off innocently enough, but Loki knew just how to get Thor angry. In fact, it was one of his favorite games. Sorry, Thor, but you're wrong. It is much better to be clever than it is strong. It is better to be strong, Thor bellowed, slamming down his drinking horn and splashing them both. Will your cleverness save you if I pick up my hammer and knock you off the Bifrost Bridge? Loki wiped the mead from his face and flicked it onto the sweet grass that the servants spread on the floor. Surely there is a way to settle this. We will both admit you are stronger than I, and that I am more clever than you. So we need a third party to test which is better, and I know just the one. That is, unless you think you'll lose. Lose? Ha! I am Thor, and I will not know defeat until the stars fall and Ragnarok rages and I meet the Midgard serpent that coils about the earth in a final battle. Loki grinned. In that case, I propose we travel to the land of the giants, and there we will see which is better, to be strong or to be clever. I'd travel twice as far for a chance to prove you wrong, brother. Then by all means, let us go. They set out that very night riding in Thor's chariot, pulled along by two goats. They were rolling through a farm-spotted countryside, halfway to the land of the giants, when Loki's belly began to grumble. What did you bring along? My hammer, my gloves, my belt, some mead? Loki sighed. I don't suppose it occurred to you to bring along anything to eat? Thor grunted and gestured at a small farmhouse on the side of the trail, smoke drifting from the chimney. Impose on the mortals? I'm not much in the mood for turnips. Turnips? Ha! I eat only meat. Come and see, brother, come and see. Thor pulled the chariot in front of the farmhouse and kicked open the door. Inside, a couple was seated by the fire with their two children, a young girl and boy. Mortals, you are in luck. Tonight you dine with the gods. Ready the fire and set the table for a feast. The couple sprung up from their chairs and laid out their wooden plates and forks. Thor went outside, and when he returned, he had two bundles of meat wrapped in goat skin. Brother, said Loki, did you slay the goats who pull the chariot? I hope you don't expect me to take their place. Worry not, brother. Listen all. Eat your fill, but take care not to break the bones. When you're finished, throw them all onto the skins, Thor said, and he laid the goat skins out in front of the fire. The meat was delicious, hot and dripping with juices, and everyone ate their fill. All of the bones went back onto the skins, but the young boy cracked one open to taste the marrow inside, thinking no one would notice. The next morning, after everyone woke, Thor took the bundles of skin and bone outside and set them on the ground. Then, holding out his great hammer called Maolinair, he blessed both of the bundles. As soon as he finished, the bundle shook and rose, turning back into living goats. Thor hitched them back to his chariot, but as they started to walk, he noticed one of the goats had a slight limp. Red with anger, the thunder god turned to the peasants. Which of you cracked a bone from my magic goats? The boy, trembling, raised his tiny hand. You admit it, said Loki with a whistle. You have courage, boy. Not a lot of sense, maybe, but certainly courage. That he does, agreed Thor, caught between anger and respect. You've injured my goat, boy, so you'll have to come along on our journey to help as repayment, you and your sister both. Please, no, cried the parents. It's too dangerous. Dangerous? They will be with Thor. There is not a creature who walks or crawls that dare attack us, said Loki. Thor's method was more direct. He unhitched the goats and led them to the parents. Care for these until we return. That leg needs time to heal. Then he reached into the chariot, picked up his bag, and threw it to the boy to carry. With that, the parents had no choice but to agree, and Thor, Loki, and the kids were soon on their way. As they traveled, they talked, and the gods soon learned that the boy was called Thialfi and the girl Roska. Without the goats, they were forced to walk, 
a slower means of travel than Thor would have liked, but it seemed slower still to Thialfi. Why are we going so slow? he said. We aren't, replied Roska. We are! We're barely moving! I want to run! Thor laughed and clapped a hand on his shoulder. You've tasted the marrow from my magic goats, a feat never before accomplished by a mortal. The magic in its blood will make you faster than any man alive, so it's no surprise walking is a chore. That night, they looked for a place to sleep, and soon came upon a mossy cave. It was right on the edge of the land of the giants, where they planned to try their contest of strength against cleverness in the morning. The cave was warm and dry as far as caves went, and there were four long passages in the back, plus one short side chamber near the front. The chariot got the short chamber, and the four each got their own long passage to sleep in. After the long day of walking, they all slept soundly, until they were awoken the next morning by a great rumbling. Earthquake! cried Thialfi, running from the cave. Get out! Get out! cried Roska, hot on his heels. Thor and Loki followed them into the sunlight, and there they saw the cause of the mighty rumbling noise. A giant lay in the grass outside the cave. He was many times the size of a normal man, with fierce and matted hair and beard, but he smiled a broken-toothed smile when he saw Thor and Loki. "'Ah, small folk,' he said. "'I am Skyrimir. Happy to meet you. Did you enjoy the comforts of my glove?' They looked, and in the daylight it was clear. They hadn't slept in a cave at all, but the lost glove of the giant. "'It was quite nice, thank you,' said Loki. "'This is my brother, Thor, and I am Loki. We are of Asgard. We are headed to the castle of the giants. Could you perhaps show us the way?' "'Thor and Loki! Even among the giants we have heard your names. I will bring you to the castle after my nap,' said Skyrimir the giant. And then he closed his eyes and quickly fell asleep. Thor was patient for a time, but only for a very, very short time. He is, after all, the god of thunder— and not the god of patience. He put on his magic gloves and belt, and hefted his great hammer. This will wake the brute, he said, and swung a light blow against the giant's forehead. Skyrimir opened one eye and mumbled, Oh, a leaf must have fallen on me, and went back to sleep. Loki started to laugh, but Thor's face twisted with rage. A leaf! A leaf! Try this! he said, and swung a mighty blow with a hammer male in there. The giant opened both eyes this time and said, "'What's this? A twig must have fallen on me,' and went back to sleep. Loki fell to the ground, laughing until tears rolled down his cheeks. Thor, his face as red as his beard, spat in his right hand and then his left, and twisted them on the hammer's grip. With a warrior's roar, he swung with all his might a godly blow right to the sleeping giant's forehead." Skyrimir opened his eyes and lifted his head a bare inch. Hm, I think an acorn fell on me. Oh, Thor, there you are. Are you ready to leave now? Thor sputtered and stammered, but couldn't think of anything to say. Come along now. I'm sure the other giants will be pleased to meet such a mighty warrior. The giants set off into the woods. Thor, Loki, and the kids had no choice but to follow. It wasn't long before they found themselves at the gates of a towering castle— "'Why have you come to the land of the giants?' said a booming voice from within. Thor started to speak, but Loki cut him off, fearing what his brother would say. "'We are here, O mighty giants, to see your strength and splendor for ourselves. Even in Asgard we have heard tales of your power.' "'Is that all?' "'We want to face you!' bellowed Thor. "'I want to show my brother here that strength is better than cleverness, no matter who the foe. "'Enter, then, and face us!' The group entered the massive castle to find a group of a dozen or so giants sitting around a table, towering above them. Skyrimir had Thor, Loki, and the kids climb into his hand, and then he placed them on the center of the table. So, said the largest of the giants, who was wearing a dented golden crown on his sour-smelling black hair, you have arrived at Utgard Castle, and you stand before its king. What sort of competition did you have in mind? I'm starving said Loki, who was always hungry. I bet I can eat more than any of you, no matter how big you are. A good beginning, I suppose, said the giant, and sent for a platter of meat. It arrived shortly thereafter, a plate of beef ribs, steaming hot and clinging loosely to the bones. 
and who will I be eating against? The king turned and gestured to a red-faced giant sitting at the end of the bench. Here is your opponent. Now, eat! Loki and the giant both started in on the massive plate of meat. Loki ate with the appetite of a hundred men, stripping the meat from each huge rib in a single motion. The giant started at the other end of the plate and ate just as quickly. Before long, they met in the middle. At first, it appeared to be a tie, but then it was seen that where Loki had only eaten the meat, the giant had also eaten the bones and the plate. The giant was declared the winner. "'Good try, brother,' laughed Thor. "'But I think he got the best of you. "'A clever man should have seen that coming.' "'Loki grumbled and walked away. "'You boy,' said the giant king, "'what can you do?' "'I am the swiftest of men,' said Thialfi. "'I have drank the marrow from the magic goat of Thor, "'and it has given me the ability to run faster than anyone.' "'Thor nodded his agreement. "'Very well,' said the king. "'Then you may race.' Let us start with our slowest runner, so you don't become embarrassed like Loki. They all went outside, and starting and ending lines were quickly marked out with rope. Ready, set, go! Thialfi was off, and he moved fast, nearly too fast for the eye to follow, faster than an arrow leaving a bow. But it wasn't fast enough. When he got to the finish line, the giant was already there waiting for him. Fast, said the king. Well, maybe for a human, but you've got nothing to a giant. Thor had found it funny when Loki lost, but the king's arrogance was beginning to bother him. Enough games, he bellowed. Try me, giant king, and see who wins and who loses. The king nodded, and they all went back inside to the table, where a giant drinking horn was now resting. Before we battle, you must drink this drinking horn. It's a small thing. Most can drink it in one sip. Some require two. No one is so weak that they need three. Thor smiled. Drinking, almost as much as fighting, was something he was very good at. He took the horn in his hands and drank and drank and drank, but couldn't drain it a single sip. Angry and embarrassed, he took a breath and tried again, this time drinking for even longer. But again, the horn was not drained. Finally, with a curse, he tipped the drinking horn up and drank until he thought he would burst. But when he had to stop, he looked in the horn and found it was only lowered by the barest inch. "'I had thought you a mighty man, Thor,' said the king. "'But clearly I was mistaken.' Thor roared with rage. "'I demand a test of strength!' The giant king motioned, and a striped cat was placed on the table in front of him. "'This cat is somewhat overweight. Maybe you can try to lift it. It's a game our children play.' Thor, sure of his strength— wrapped his mighty arms around the cat, and heaved with all the power he had. In the end, all he managed to do was lift a single paw off of the table. All of the giants began to laugh at him, Loki joining in. Enough! No one laughs at Thor! I demand a battle! The king shrugged. I don't think any giant here would feel good about defeating so weak a man. But if you insist, you can wrestle my grandmother. He whispered to Skyrimir, and the giant left, returning a few minutes later with an old woman, back bent and face covered in deep wrinkles. Well, said the king, here she is. Do you still wish to battle? Thor threw himself upon the grandmother, locking her in his arms in a bear hug that none had ever escaped. Until then. The old giant shrugged out of his grip and spun him, locking him into a bear hug of her own. She forced him down and down, until finally Thor was forced to drop to one knee. "'The winner!' cried the king, grabbing his grandmother's hand and holding it high. "'Behold all, the vanquisher of the mighty Thor!' Embarrassed beyond all belief, Thor stormed out of the castle, followed closely by Loki and the kids. They waded into the woods, the men all shamed and quiet. Roska began to whistle a happy tune— "'enjoying the sunny day. "'Thor! Thor!' "'It was the giant Skyrimir, running to catch them. "'What do you want? Have you come to gloat?' "'No, the opposite. "'Now that you are out of the land of the giants in Castle Lutgard, "'you will never again be able to find it, "'for that is the magic of the castle. "'That being said, there are a few things I must tell you. "'We giants heard of your coming, and we feared your strength.' 
Knowing that we could never overpower you, we instead decided to trick you. The three times you hit me with your hammer while I slept? That was only an illusion of me. Come and look at what you actually hit. The giant led them through the trees until they came to the rim of a vast crater. All of the trees smashed to splinters. Beyond that, they could see two more craters stretching to the horizon. These are the three hammer blows you dealt. Had you really hit me, I would have surely been destroyed. Thor scowled. And at the castle? All of the opponents were also illusions. The giant Loki faced in the eating contest is named Logi, which is our word for fire, because the giant was actually no more than fire itself wrapped in a magical disguise. Fire consumes all, so Loki had no chance to win. In the race, Thialfi was running against Thought, which is so swift that nothing that runs or flies could hope to match it. Thor's face was growing darker, his mouth curled in a snarl, and his hands curled on his magic hammer. Tell me the rest. The drinking horn looked normal, but the other end was actually in the ocean. Even lowering it the tiniest bit as you did is amazing. In your honor, the seas will lower themselves twice every day. Even more impressive is when you lifted the cat's paw. You see, the cat is actually the Midgard serpent in disguise. As you know, the Midgard serpent encircles the entire human world, so lifting even a paw is a feat beyond measure. And the grandmother? Thor grunted through clenched teeth. Again, just an illusion. You are actually wrestling against age, which is impossible to defeat. The fact that she was only able to bring you to one knee proves that you are a god with strength beyond that of any giant. And that is all of it. Now I should go back to the castle. I know you're angry about the tricks, but it was the only way we could think to defend against you. Defend against this! Thor roared and swung his magic hammer at the giant. Of course, it passed right through, the giant again being an illusion, which only made Thor angrier. He stormed back through the woods, planning on smashing the entire giant castle to the ground. But when they arrived where it had been, there was only an empty field. Well, said Loki with a sly smile, still think being strong will always beat being clever? Maybe cleverness has its uses, said Thor begrudgingly, but strength is still better. Whatever you say, brother, whatever you say. The End Thanks for listening!